Hey parents, do you want more than anything to raise your kids to become confident and emotionally intelligent adults who have great relationships with others and who are able to live up to their fullest potential in life? Would it help you to know the actual capacities and traits they're gonna need to achieve these things? And would you like a specific roadmap of how you can help them develop these capacities and traits? In this video, I'm gonna share with you exactly that. I'm gonna help you to understand how you, as your child's parent, are uniquely positioned to help them become secure individuals who are emotionally intelligent and resilient, who are creative problem solvers, and who have the healthy boundaries needed to achieve all of these outcomes. My name is Todd Sarner, and I'm a psychotherapist and parenting coach. My mission is to provide parents like you with the education and resources you need to have the family life you've always wanted and to raise children that thrive. You know, sometimes parenting can be confusing and overwhelming, and we can get so caught up in the day-to-day -day that we can lose track of big picture questions like, what is the actual goal of parenting? I'd argue that our main goal is to help our children become secure human beings first, and that this security is the main factor in fueling some very specific capabilities that they need to thrive in life. When your kids have this secure base, and these capabilities, they are so much more likely to grow into their full potential. One of the most useful mindsets that I think you can have as a parent is something that I learned about 20 years ago from my mentor, Dr. Gordon Neufeld. He said that parents should see themselves not as sculptors of their children, but as gardeners. A sculptor parent sees their job as bending and shaping and molding their children. They spend most of their time reacting to their kids and their behavior. A gardener parent, on the other hand, sees themselves as someone whose job it is to create the right conditions and to make sure their children have the nourishment and the things they need so that their inborn potentials can naturally unfold and occur. The master key, a secure base. Like I said, developmentally, our main job as parents is to create secure human beings over time. Think of this as the master key. But creating secure human beings is not easy. It takes a lot of time and experience. When a child is feeling insecure or anxious in the moment, that's where all their energy is going. They don't have the focus or the energy or the presence they need to be learning or growing in the right way. Imagine a child in a classroom and they're having a bad day and they're thinking things like, nobody likes me, I don't have any friends, I'll never have any friends. That child's not gonna learn a lot today. Creating a secure base happens mostly at home and it happens when we create this culture that prioritizes connection and family time and helping our kids feel connected when apart. And it happens when we take the time to focus on identifying and meeting the individual needs at each stage of each of our children. It's not like we're focused on trying to be perfect as a parent or perfect to our children because that's impossible. It's more like we're trying to create this environment in which our kids are collecting experiences of I am taken care of, I am loved, my needs matter, I am not too much, and I am not alone. Now that I've explained this master key to unlocking our child's potentials, let's talk specifically about those actual potentials and how we help them develop. Capacity number one, your child becomes an integrative being. One of the three main capacities that we want to see children develop over time is what we call integrative energy. This means children will have the ability to have their own feelings, but also be able to empathize with others, be able to see situations from multiple perspectives and angles, feel fear inside, but be able to have courage and take action anyway. And to hear that metaphorical devil on one shoulder telling them to do the wrong thing, but be able to go with the angel on the other shoulder telling them to do the right thing. Integrative energy is a big part of a lot of the different traits we want to see develop in our kids. But it's important for you to understand that it's not even physically possible for the most part for them to have this energy until at least five to seven years old. This energy requires a functioning prefrontal cortex right here in the brain which isn't even hooked up until they're at least five years old. This is why so many behavior problems are so much worse with children when they're under seven years old. They don't even have the part of their brain yet that cares about the impact of their actions when they're angry. They don't have the part of their brain that really has empathy when they're upset about something. And they get really locked in on just one thing at a time because that's all their brain can do. Therefore, helping your child develop integrative energy partially involves not even really expecting it before they're seven years old. 
And after that involves recognizing and validating and modeling this kind of behavior when you see it. When our children come to us and when you're paying attention, you're gonna notice they do and they say things like, part of me wanted to hit my little brother, but part of me didn't, so I didn't. Or they come to us and say, I really wanted to do that thing, but I was really afraid, but I wanted it so much, I did it. Those are examples of developing integrative energy and we wanna support this. We say things back to them like, yeah, I get that. I feel that way sometimes too. Sometimes part of me wants to do this and part of me wants to do that. I'm just so glad you chose not to hit your brother. Or I'm so proud of you that you did what you were afraid of. That is so brave. This helps root and reinforce integrative energy. The second energy we want to see children develop is what we call emergent energy. This is the energy of wanting to learn and explore and play. This is the energy of wanting to figure things out, of not getting bored very often and being very curious about the world. This energy is crucial to your child becoming a good learner, to having a good relationship with themselves, and research shows it is a big part of them becoming happy in life. Children generally start off with a lot of this energy. That's why when they're little, you can spend a lot of time and effort getting them an amazing, expensive toy, and all they want to do is play with the box. Because to them, it's not just a box, it's a rocket ship, or a race car, or a tree house. Unfortunately, over time, there are a lot of forces at play that can suppress this energy in kids. Things like adults that are always telling them to stop it, or schools that don't allow for this energy enough, or too much screen time, which doesn't necessarily leave enough room for their own emergent play. The main factor in helping our children develop this emergent energy is helping them to, as often as possible over time, feel deeply connected and secure. We've all seen this in our children sometimes. When a child is feeling really loved and content and secure, they don't cling, they venture forth. They go explore and create and play. This is just one part of why I named a secure base as that master key. Beyond security, we also wanna make sure that our children have lots of pathways open in front of them to learn and explore and play and be creative. Over time, we want to recognize and support our children's creative interests. This helps keep the fires of emergence alive. Before I go on, I want to suggest that one of the greatest ways you can best grow into your greatest potential, both as a parent and as a person, is to like this video and subscribe to our channel. It's great because it tells us that we're making videos that are helping you as a parent and it helps YouTube tune in to what you want to see more of. The third capacity that we want to see develop in our children is what we call adaptive energy. What this means is when your children inevitably build up frustration in life about things they can't have or can't do or can't change, they are able to process and metabolize these feelings and not let them build up too much. That's why young children are naturally more aggressive. They're not integrative yet and they're not adaptive and they don't know how to accept things that they can't change in life. It is a perfect storm that leads to a lot of anger and aggression sometimes. The best way that we as parents can help our children become adaptive human beings is to learn how to recognize when their frustration is building up and then become really good at helping them feel it and process it and move it through. We do this by having limits on our children's behavior when they're getting frustrated and saying no to them at the right time in a way that is firm and clear but also compassionate and that has empathy for their experience and what they're going through. When we do this well, when we learn to have the right balance of firm and clear but also compassionate, this is how we're best able to help our children to feel their feelings and to cry and to get it out. It is in this process that we are helping our children develop these muscles of being adaptive and resilient, and it is one of the greatest gifts that we can ever give them. That's our video for today. Be sure to check out other videos on our channel because many of them go even deeper into some of these ideas if you wanna learn more. Check out the description box below for some specific links. As always, please leave your comments and questions below. I read them all, including topics you'd like me to cover in future videos. As you might know, at the end of each video, I like to share one of my favorite parenting quotes that is usually connected in some way to the topic of that video. Today's quote is by Fred Rogers, affectionately known as Mr. Rogers, who said, children who have learned to be comfortably dependent can become not only comfortably independent, but also comfortable with having people depend on them. They can lean, stand, and be leaned upon, 
because they know what a good feeling it can be to feel needed. He has some of my favorite quotes of all time, so you're probably going to hear more of them here on the channel. Thanks for being here today, and I'll see you in the next video.